Starting off the openings today with Great Scott Cream Ale from Black Wheat Brewing in Brandon, Manitoba. They describe it as a deliciously refreshing cream ale with a smooth body, slight hop finish, and just a hint of biscuity nutty flavor. And a very different color than I was expecting from something called Black Wheat Brewing. Anyway, the first item in has a steering gear as the description. All right. I don't remember ordering gears. Oh, it's some servos. Even smaller than those 9 gram uh, Tower Pro servos that I normally use. GHS37D. 3.7 gram, maybe? Anyway, I got two of them and they come with uh, standard shapes of servo horns. A long one, a short one, a single and a four-way kind of one. And... One screw for the horn and two screws for mounting. Very standard servo stuff. So that should uh, be an interesting addition. I use servos surprisingly often around here just for oddball little things. So having a different form factor might come in handy. They might even work better in those uh, 3D printed stage lights that I was doing a while ago. Two pieces, 3.7 gram ultra micro digital servo nano for RC helicopter, boat gear, etc. GHS37D. I paid $9.91 Canadian with free shipping for the two of these guys. What features do we have? 3.7 gram precision high torque, low noise, da da da, da all nylon, durable, whatever. Wire at 150 millimeters, sure. So they weigh 3.7 grams. Um, it doesn't, oh no, torque. Uh, Half a kilogram per centimeter at 3.6 volts or 0.7 kilograms per centimeter at 4.8 volts. Hmm. And speed, uh, 0.13 seconds for 60 degrees or 0.1 seconds at 6 volts. Okay. To work up to, hmm. Why are they specking the speed at 6 volts if they only work up to 4.8 volts? That's also interesting. So they don't. Well, they probably will run on 5 volts, I'm guessing, but I don't know. I guess I'll uh, sacrifice one just to see what they'll tolerate. Oh, and these are only 90 degree servos. That's useful to keep in mind, too. Well, they should be fun to play with anyway, if nothing else, and they may come in handy for applications where the 9 gram ones just won't fit. Off to a good start. Well, let's see what's next. This one says SSD case. All right. So this is an M.2 NVMe solid state drive enclosure. Runs on USB 3.1. And basically it just uh, turns one of those new NVMe M.2 drives into a really big USB drive, which is just the perfect thing for, uh, for moving bigger files around or backing stuff up and whatnot, right? Just as, an, as a backup drive. There we have the standard M.2 interface. A uh, couple of chips in there. That one looks like it's probably power and auto inductor, I'm guessing. LED, a couple of resistors. Not much else on there. It has the mounting holes for the various different sizes of M.2 drive. The package comes with a couple of little... Well, those aren't screws. Those are just pins to hold your drive in place. Okay. And then a USB-A to USB-C connector. Yeah, or cable. Very straightforward, but I think will be handy just for moving big files around and doing backup and that kind of thing. That's probably what I'll use it for the most is just backing files up or, you know, moving these video files around. They're getting bigger as time goes on. M.2 to USB Type-C 3.1 SSD adapter NVMe NGFF dual protocol SSD box. Got this for uh, $12.11 Canadian or $13.89 if you happen to be in Australia. Is there much else to see down here? Tool-free installation? Yeah, because it's got that little uh, pin clip thing. External storage solution? Yes, it is. Aluminum alloy enclosure? Sure. Compatibility with the various different lengths of uh, M.2 SSD? Yep. So if it works on Mac, Windows and Android and whatever this thing is, I'm confident it's going to work on Linux. It's just a USB device, right? Next in, it says RC part. Oh, okay. 
another remote control part, maybe, possibly. What do we have here? Oh, that is another radio control receiver, another six channel one, exactly the same as the six channel one that I got uh, a few weeks ago with that uh, really cheap remote control transmitter. Um, again, it was cheap. That way I can leave one in one project and one in another project if I choose to without moving them around and I just have to repair it. That's nice. And this, what is this? Oh, this looks like an, yeah, okay. This is an electronic speed controller that, uh, speaks the same language as the RC, uh, PWM signal. Uh, this one, I think. Yeah, this one I believe is a, a DC motor controller. So you can just use any standard DC motor, as long as it doesn't draw too much current, and control it from your RC thing, which means you've got forward and reverse and, you know, any other functions, speed control, I guess, and then just the power on off. And if I remember correctly, most of these uh, electronic speed controllers will provide power to the remote control receiver through the control cable there. And then we'll create the five volts to power it off the battery, which one of these will be the battery and which I'm guessing the input is uh, that one. And the output there goes to your motor. Yeah. The outside pair, which is this one says plus and minus. I'm going to guess that's the input. All right. Oster RC transmitter receiver, 2.4 gig, three channel, four channel, six channel RC kit for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the same listing where I bought the uh, transmitter receiver set from. So I'm fairly confident this is going to be compatible. The receiver itself cost me $13 and three cents Canadian with four bucks shipping, 408. And the ESC is also from the same listing. Okay, so that's useful information. It's a 10 amp ESC. And it cost me 1138 Canadian with combined shipping with the other ones. So split that shipping in half or whatever. So the receiver we saw in that previous video, it's six channels, 2.4 gigahertz, runs on between four and six and a half volts, weighs only five grams. Its antenna is 13 centimeters long. Please don't cut it because that's tuned approximately to the length. And the ESC, 10 amp ESC, three running modes, forward, brake, and reverse. Yeah, okay, what else do you want out of a motor? Um, so it is for brushed motors, uh, maximum current 15 amps for less than five seconds. Yeah. Power supply, either a 2S LiPo, which will be about eight volts, seven and a half to eight volts, or between four and seven nickel metal hydride or NICAD batteries. But really, why would you use that? Uh, technology if you've got access to a lipo anyway that should be an interesting thing to mess around with in the future all right next thing in it doesn't actually say what it is but it's fairly substantial it's got some weight to it and it's quite solid oh this is just blank copper clad circuit board material okay there's five of them. They're 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters each. So obviously, you know what I'm going to use these for. Um, I did a video a while ago doing uh, DIY circuit boards, and I think I found a method of DIY circuit boards that hopefully is a little bit more, uh, more neat and tidy than what I did last time. Oh, and these are the fiberglass style, not the cheap phenolic resin one. So that's that's good to know. Anyway, yeah, I'll still be using my, uh, my chemistry from the hardware store, but, oh, you'll have to wait and see in an upcoming video, uh, how I, uh, process these. I hope it's going to work better, but time will tell. Five pieces, 10 by 15 centimeter, single PCB copper clad laminate board new. Well, I would hope it's new. Uh, I paid $7.51. Canadian or 551 American for the five of these. So the Americans a little over a buck 10 each, not too bad. Free shipping. Of course, that's the way I search. It is FR4. It is single sided operating temperature up to 140 degrees Celsius. Uh, okay. May have a few fingerprints you can clean. Yes. Yes. I will be cleaning them. 
All right, what else is there to say? It's copper circuit board. And the last thing in, it doesn't say what it is. Again, okay. Well, that's easily remedied. Let's see what we got in here. Cardboard box with more Chinese lettering on it. Ah! This is a little six button and one rotary encoder with clickiness um, mini keyboard, um, macro keyboard they call it. And the reason I ordered this, and I hope it's going to work for it, is to try and streamline my editing. There's only four or five uh, hotkeys that I tend to use over and over and over again when I'm editing video. So I'm hoping that I can bind them to this so I don't have to do control and hit the various keys. I can just do single key. I'm going to have to label it, but I can do that with my label maker. That shouldn't be an issue. Also in the box is a USB A to USB C, some little rubber feet, and a tiny little manual here. Looks like they've got a variety of different versions available. Connect with USB cable, click key one, click control C, and click download. Hmm. I think I may have to uh, follow the little uh, tutorial or whatever that's on that. I'll get back to you. Hopefully this thing is Linux compatible. I wasn't even thinking about that. But it should just be a keyboard, you'd think. What do we got? Oh, the uh, the cherry style switches underneath there. Oh, cool. And they look like they're plugged into sockets. So I can change them out if I decide that I don't like the soft touch version of these red ones. Okay, and I can change the keycaps too because it's all very standard stuff. Cool. Programming macro custom knob keyboard RGB three key copy paste mini button Photoshop gaming keypad mechanical hot swap macro pad. Yeah, uh, basically twenty bucks, nineteen eighty three plus three dollars shipping, so that's not too bad. Down from thirty dollars, I guess. Okay, I guess that's not horrible. Um, yeah, it does have red switches, not Bluetooth, no layer function, six keys plus one knob. They have various other ones as well, right up to these big fancy ones. So I chose one that I think has enough buttons for what I need just to try and streamline my editing just a little bit. Oh, good. They have software and software. Yeah, if I'm reading this right, it looks like you do need to use their software just to program at once. So I'll have to mess with that and uh, set it up properly, but... You can see how it does this. You just set uh, whatever key press you want to uh, to actually send, you know, whatever key combination you want. So I think that's going to do what I want. All right, so when I plug it in, it does show up as Acer Communications and Multimedia Device. Interesting. And then any button that I push, including clicking the wheel or rotating the wheel just sends a C. So at least it is sort of compatible. The problem is the program to tell it what uh, keystrokes I want is Windows only. So I'm going to, well, maybe I'll try it under Wine first. And if that doesn't work, then I'll have to resort to, like I said, borrowing one of the kids' school computers temporarily. And there we have the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. An interesting variety as often happens around here. Some blank circuit board for making circuit boards. Uh, M.2 drive enclosure for, well, for moving files around and stuff. Handful of RC stuff, a couple of uh, little tiny servos, engine speed controller for a DC, and of course another remote control receiver. And then this interesting little uh, macro keypad here. I'm fairly confident that I'll be able to get it to uh, program up using, like I said, just one of the kids' old uh, school computers that I've commandeered. Those things only last a few years in school backpack service. They were cheap anyway, and so I think I can repurpose one of them into my Windows Slave machine for when I'm forced to use Windows software. Anyway, that's something for another day. Um, Thanks for all for watching. As always, I do appreciate it. Questions and comments down below. Special thanks, as always, to my YouTube channel members and my 
Patreon supporters. They're the ones that uh, help keep these mailbags rolling in and, of course, help keep my beer fridge full. Super important to the process there. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to, uh, to say at this point, so I will just end it with a thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.